Hey, guess what? Once again, Monday night has descended upon us, and it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. And tonight on our show, very special guest joining us from the Bay Area mm -hmm. is Samantha Paris. The very smoky Bay Area. Yes. Mm. And, uh, but she, she's still breathing, which, is, which is important. Yes. But uh, she's uh, the founder of Voice Tracks SF mm -hmm. uh, up in San Francisco. Uh, she's a teacher, coach. She's an actress herself, mm -hmm. and she has just written a really fascinating book called Finding the Bunny. Finding the Bunny. Uh oh, the, Which bu is a the green bunny is, book. is a green book, <laughs> and it's disappearing. <laughs> hey, we'll just put it down here. We'll put it in front of you. It doesn't work. It that doesn't way. work that way. All right. <laughs> That's the window to my soul. Technology. Anyway, it's a great book. I read it today, and uh, it's all about her life and how it relates to finding your own voice. And as voice actors, that's really important. Plus, we have a pile of tech. I mean, it, and do. it's piling up. And viewer questions. And viewer questions. All that and more coming up on Voice Over Body Shop right now. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voice over recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. Voice Over Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. <laughs> Wow, listen to the crowds. They're going wild. Wow, it's like being at a football game. You know, it's funny when people come in here and see the show live, they're always like, this place looks smaller than I pictured. Well, if you watch the intro to the show, <laughs> right before we come on, you'll see the actual space we're doing Right. Here. It's not something from, you know, from David Letterman where they show a little dimly lit window in a building. <laughs> right. That is the building. This is really where we do it from. It's that small. Yeah. But it's, uh, it just it's, doesn't seem it. It's the illusion of television. That's right, which is the gentlemen. great thing about television. That reminds me, it's time to put our phones on, on stun. stun. Oh, yeah, make sure. Yeah, You don't want to have to answer people's calls during the show. Let's it has happened, though. Yes, we have. If you do call us by mistake, we will put you on the spot and on the air. That's right. So anyway, we have the author of this very transparent book, uh, Finding the Bunny. transparent. Um, by Samantha Paris, yeah. uh, the founder of Voice Tracks SF up mm -hmm. in the Bay Area. And uh, it's a great book. Interesting. And we're going to yeah. find out how you're going to find your voice without unplugging everything while I move the book around. <laughs> um, and we've got lots of tech. And um, well, some, they already know all that. I know. But perhaps they didn't hear it in the first okay. place. You know, people tune in and, you know. Anyway. Eventually tune in. Uh, so we're going to find our voice now because it's time for... Voice of a Body Shop presents the VOBS Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. And here it is, the voiceover extra news for November 19th, the VO Backstory. 
Are you satisfied with how conversational you can sound in a voiceover read? Better yet, of course, are your clients satisfied? We all know it's not easy to shake the announcer from our voice, but our good friend Mark Cashman has a three-step method he uses almost all the time to get into the tone of the script, especially when the script is chock full of advertising ease, the kinds of buzzwords and phrases that you would never actually say in a conversation. For Mark, the technique is to create a backstory, something you imagine to be happening in the world of the script before you begin to voice it. Yes, you've probably heard about this technique, but in a new article now at voiceoverextra.com, Mark demonstrates a three-step method for creating an authentic backstory quickly. By the way, this is part of what you'll learn from Mark in a Voiceover Extra webinar on Tuesday night, commercial voiceover delivery secret secrets that will make your head explode. <laughs> Here goes. Create the backstory by answering three simple questions, Dan. One, who am I? Well, the script is going to tell you. You're a mom. You're a store manager. You're someone suffering a horrid disease. Get into that mindset. Two, who are you talking to? A friend. Uh, a store customer. A teleprompter. A who teleprompter. Who scroll. When it listens to you in a clearly acoustically treated room with a very low noise floor. Exactly. Okay, someone sitting next to you in a doctor's <laughs> waiting room. <laughs> You know, we were sitting there with a the magazine. Yeah, uh -huh. And three, where are you? <laughs> well, that gets where obvious am I? once you've answered the questions one and two. Now put it all together and start an imaginary conversation with the person or persons you're talking to. And here's where this technique might differ from what you've learned in the past. Mark suggests imagining more than just one line before you start to voice the script. Create a dialogue with that person. Become so comfortable in that setting that you just have to sound conversational. You know, without a backstory, you jump into a script cold, mm -hmm. and you'll likely freeze if that happens. In, vo in this VoiceOver Extra article, Mark gives us a great example of how this works. And while you're at VoiceOverExtra.com, click around for thousands of additional articles and resources there to help your voiceover career. Good yes. example today, because yes. I had one of those scripts come in, and it's a Conversa literally, literally. Conversational. Con it's yes. a conversational, laid back, and I did it kind of conversational and laid back. Dan conversational, laid back. Well, which is, yeah. I Still slightly, you know. Yeah, you know, I tend to talk very formally. Yes, you, and you do, because that's, that, that's you. That's that's my voice. Yeah. And uh, and then my, my agent writes back, you know, try again. Yeah. It, you're still too formal. I'm like, try harder, but not as hard. Yeah, but not exactly. <laughs> so I essentially, and this, and Roger Leopardi used to do tell, less. Yeah. What was that movie where the guy's teaching someone how to surf? Right. And they're like, he's like, don't, don't do that. Do right. less. Do, do right. less. Right. <laughs> so essentially, I just, I threw it away and just, love it. It's great. Isn't that funny? I don't that's know. the style. That's it's that's the, the style the for less interested you sound, the more interested the millennials are about pulling their wallet out of their pockets. Uh, that's true. Actually, they don't use wallets. No, they, they use, use uh, their, Android, the Apple, and Pay, Apple Pay, and, and they that use, sort of uh, thing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. So you create a backstory. That's that's an old technique, but Mark, you know, he's like, he makes it so simple. He spells it out for you. He really does. Mm -hmm. So what's up in tech this week? No, I've found a bunch of stories. Like I've been scouring Facebook groups that I'm on, and the voiceover body, uh, voiceover body shop, the voiceover uh, bulletin board uh, for for topics and a few things that have popped up recently. Um, you know, we've talked about Mojave. Don't upgrade. We've been telling everybody this, I, but I, I did it. I did it on it's my on laptop. Dan's laptop. He's no fun. problem. Generally, if you use a laptop that's not hooked to a bunch of peripherals, so you're not using some controller thing and some other external video adapter thing and some other blah, blah, blah. Generally, upgrading is going to be a pretty safe bet. Now, we have heard anecdotally that Mojave has been pretty darn good. It There's has been, been very few reports of real problems, um, including folks using the um, Universal Audio Apollo, which we talk about a lot because a lot of people are using them. It seems to be working just fine. So I'm not. this isn't an endorsement. It's just a notification that, yes, Mojave is working pretty well. There is one thing to look out for. When you do upgrade to Mojave, just like on an iPhone, it wants permission to use your audio device. Right. You know, like permission to use the microphone. 
that now works. That's how Mojave is. So any audio device you plug in, you have to go into security and then give permission to using that device or no audio flows. So keep that in mind. It yeah. can be annoying. I, I've noticed the upgrade on the iPhone. Uh, it changes a number of your settings. Oh, you just know. arbitrarily. Just arbitrarily. Oh, it's like, oh, okay, fun. I'm now going to wake you up at 6.30, not 7.15. Oh, well, That was nice of you to tell me that. Yes, good to know. <laughs> Uh, another thing that popped up on my radar is that apparently Audacity, which had been testing this feature on their latest release, 2.3.0, has punch and roll. So now in Audacity, you can do what appears to be proper punch and roll. I have not had a chance to test this. I literally found this app today when I was browsing all my Facebook groups. So I'm in the Audacity check it out. Group. Let us know how it works. Yeah, report back. If you've already tried it, let us know. And if you haven't, give it a shot. Um an Apple TV hack. So, like, if you want to run a monitor in your booth and you're an Apple person, but your MacBook Air only has one Thunderbolt port. Right. And it's being used now if probably. If it's one of those new ones. Yeah. Well, even, yeah. The, even, even my MacBook Air is a 2013. It has a single Thunderbolt port. Um, if you're using an Apollo, well, guess what? You now will have no ability to run an external monitor. You've right. used up your video output. But if you have an Apple TV, and you can get these on eBay cheap now, you can get a Generation 2 or a 3 for probably 50 bucks. Now you have a way to plug that into a monitor in your booth. So you're now sending video to the monitor over what they call AirPlay. It's built into the Mac. That can become your second monitor now. So you can run that anywhere in the house. It can be on Ethernet. It could be Wi-Fi, although it might be a little bit more laggy. Right. But that's another way that you can run a monitor in your booth. Cool. And um, I'd thought about this for a while, but somebody just recently said he was doing this, and I'm very sorry that I can't credit you because I can't. I think it was Andrew Pifko. Andrew, if you're watching and it's you, then tell me. I, th I think it was Andrew. But anyway, good, nice little workaround. Um, a little thing, this may be old news to Windows people at this point, but if you did upgrade to the newest Windows o uh, update, which is 18.03, um, it's doing a similar thing apparently that Mojave's doing where it turns off your microphone for security purposes. They assume that if you're using audio devices on your Windows computer, and likewise Apple, that you want to give the computer, computer permission to use your microphone. I do get it. I understand where they're going with this. They don't want built-in microphones to arbitrarily be available and then arbitrarily be listened to. Uh, so that's why they're making us do this manually. It's just a little hoop to jump through. So if you're, as Liz says, if you're on Windows 10 and you have SoundForge, the latest update, which is 18.03, also known as April 2018 update, it just updated on her PC today. This was a couple weeks ago. Will automatically turn off your microphone by default. So to turn your mic back on, hit the Windows key, search for microphone privacy settings, hit change, and turn it to on. And allow access to microphone on this device and allow apps to access your microphone. It took her over two hours to figure that out. <laughs> this is why updating your system in the middle of your work day or your work nah, week is not a good idea. Not a good idea. But I, I do get it. I mean, Windows systems are even a little bit more invasive with updates. They tend to just push them out there while you're asleep without your authorization. Right. So anyway, that's it for the tech news updates. We Boy, got that's more. A pile to talk about with tech do. after the break because we got a few questions that came in. Yeah, and we love getting questions from uh, you guys out there. If you have a voiceover studio tech question and you'd like us to answer it on the show, write to us at theguys at vobs.tv. There it mm -hmm. is. And if you're watching right it live, there. put it in the chat room. We got yeah, uh, we got Jack watching Jack's the, there. the website chat room. There's also the Facebook chat. Either one, we'll, we'll get it. And Jack is monitoring it from... His own studio because he's on call for. Ew, oh boy, he's Jackie. he's he's made the big time. He's on call right. for he's updating call. trailers. Good job, Jack. All righty. Well, we've got Samantha Paris coming up in about uh, fifteen minutes, and she is waiting there, chomping at the bit. And we've got your questions coming up here on Voiceover Body Shop. So don't go away. We'll be right back after these. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Knew what they were doing, or at least they have you convinced. They put the BS and VOBS.TV. Okay, the one voiceover question no one wants to talk about is, how much work do you get? And the reason is, no one books as much as they want. 
you, you audition all the time and your booking rate is never high enough and you have no clue what to do about it. Well, I got some great news for you. Mark your calendar on this for December 3rd. VO2GOGO is going to help you change all that. David H. Lawrence, the 17th, is going to offer an amazing free, yes, free class starting that Monday for the next week called the VO Booking Blueprint. He'll share with you eight effective and proven ways to increase your booking rate and how to do so instantly. It's always the big elephant in the room. How much are you booking? How much money are you making? We don't talk about that. Is this all worth it at all? Well, how would you like to raise the bar on all that? Stay tuned. VO2GOGO will have some great training for you on how to up your game with the VO Booking Blueprint. It's coming December 3rd, all from VO2GOGO.com. Everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop, and... Uh, we have a lot of questions tonight. I yes, love that. Got to remind you guys, send in your questions, the guys at VOBS.TV. And George and I love questions. That's what drives this show. That's what we founded this show on. This show is influenced by Car Talk, and that's what that show, that's what drove that show, and that's what has always driven our show. Right. So let's answer your questions that you have sent in. And they're interesting questions. What's uh, this first one from? I missed the name. Uh, I it was. I, I, it was from somebody. We'll find it. Okay. Whoever it is, I hope you're listening. Yeah. Chances <laughs> are they are since they sent this in the True. other day. It says, hi, guys. I'm getting ready to start out in the voiceover world, and I'm he heeding the advice of saving all audio files on an external hard drive. I'm now shopping around for the best external hard drive for Macs for my 2015 MacBook Pro. Keep in mind that I have two Thunderbolt ports and two USB 3 ports. Also, how many terabytes should I take into consideration to purchase since I'm on the verge of starting out in VO? My budget's a hundred to two hundred dollars. Okay. Not hard. No, Ter I... Terabytes are cheap now. Yeah, I mean, uh, really for the purposes of what you're using it for, there really there really is no real differentiation in terms of between all these different consumer consumer hard drives, right. these USB drives. Don't blow the money on a Thunderbolt hard drive. Very, very expensive. Stick to the USB. Yeah, it's it's it, that's something that someone that does a lot of video production that needs that really fast hard drive, that's what they're going to be looking for. You're really going to be using your hard drive as a backup method. You, you should be saving files there, but not as the only place you're saving files right. there. That hard drive should be a backup for what is initially being stored on your system. Right. Now, anybody with a, with a modern Mac, honestly, just record to the internal drive. You're going to have no problem. If it's a 2015 MacBook Pro, it has a solid state internal drive that are stupid fast. Right. And recording to that internal drive is no problem. Right. But use that external drive as a backup drive. Use that with the Time Machine. That's the built-in backup software on your Mac. When you plug in a new hard drive, the Mac will actually ask you right away, do you want to use this for Time Machine? Unless that drive was being used for something else and you don't want to lose what's on there, then say yes, make that your backup drive. But right. yeah, Western Digital, Seagate, Great, yeah. whatever's on sale. At Lacey. The, Lacey. They're a little yeah, more expensive. Lacey is but, fine. You know, you know GTEC, whatever's available to you on sale, internally, they're all the same hard drive 
they're probably Western Digital. Well, most likely. You know, yeah. so it's it, it's not that big a deal. Yeah. It's important to know, though, that, that you don't want to clog up your, your computer. So every now and again, take all of those audition files you have and all those project files and move them onto the hard drive, the external hard drive, right. and perhaps onto your Google Drive. Yeah. Or your iCloud drive or clouds? your Dropbox yeah. where I have all my stuff. All right, now, where did I put it? It was yeah. it Dropbox. Was it Google Drive? Oh, <laughs> here it is. Oh, it's on that hard drive that I unplugged two years ago yeah. that's in the closet. Since we're on the topic, if you, I'll give you the quick version okay. of what I personally do. So I have a, my computer has two hard drives inside, but that's not important. I record everything internally. Then when it's, uh, then it's automatically backing up because I'm using Time Machine. Right. And I'm using something called Crash Plan. That goes up to the cloud. Also, those files are going to Dropbox because that's where I put all my work stuff. So it's being backed up again. Now, the hard drive, yes, it's going to fill up. Guaranteed, it will fill up. Doesn't matter how big it is, you're going to fill it up. So eventually, maybe about once a year, whenever necessary, then I get another hard drive. And I call that the <laughs> archive drive. <laughs> And I move stuff to the archive drive. That means now that stuff is only on that drive. It is not no longer on my computer. And then it gets plug, unplugged and sits on a shelf. So it's, you know, that's mm -hmm. that's how you can keep data for the long haul. Right. If it's in a hard drive, not plugged in, and it's just sitting in there off, it's going to be fine for years and years and years. And they're making those drives so huge now. I mean, okay, I've yeah. seen six terabyte drives. Yeah. I you think know? a 14 terabyte was just announced, you know, for building servers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But you're, anyway. you're not going to need that for voice. It'll take you a lifetime to fill. But basically in the world terabytes. of data, if it doesn't exist in at least two places at once, it doesn't exist. Good Remember point. That. Good point. Okay. Uh, Matt Gilchek mm -hmm. asks, uh, I'm looking into purchasing a new Mac Mini 2018 for my studio. Cool. As am I. I like those things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for VO purposes, is there any reason you would recommend upgrading from the base model? I use Adobe Audition CC and an Apollo Twin Solo. Not for the purposes of the CPU. Even the base model CPU processor is is going to be fine. Right. It's a little bit weak. I think it's a quad i3 or something like that. It's not amazing, but honestly, it's still plenty fine for voiceover. I personally, because I do a lot more than VO, I do video, so I go up to the next step up. But if you upgrade anything, I would upgrade the memory. The base is 8 gigabytes. Again, but in 16. fine, but if you can swing it, go up to 16. Right. The beauty of it with the new Mac Mini is they've, go, they've taken a step backwards in a good way, and that is they allow you to upgrade your own memory. So if you can't swing more than 750 for the new Mac Mini, don't worry about it. And then just upgrade the memory later when you have the dough. And get you can get a 16 gigabyte memory upgrade for probably a hundred bucks. Yeah, it's not. It, and you're as you've always been saying, RAM is cheap. It it is cheap generally. It kind of goes up and down in price, but it it generally is pretty in a, pretty affordable. The 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 only thing that your you know the base model has that maybe cramps your style a little bit is it only has I think 128 gig base SSD drive. Okay, so you're gonna fill it up probably in a few months. So that might be something worth upgrading. I, I kind of priced it out, and to get one that wasn't top of the line, but to me had all the right bells and whistles, was roughly thirteen, fifteen hundred dollars, about twice the base model. But that was with a lot of upgrades. So the short answer is, buy the base model. You're probably going to be fine. You're not going to have any issue. And the Apollo Twin, it it does its own processing on board anyway. If right. you're using it at all, that doesn't put a load on the system. So you're fine. Go All ahead right. and get the base model, unless you have heavy video to do. Right. All right. Which leads us to our last question mm -hmm. from the very lovely J.J. Jurgens, who asks, which Apollo twin, the Mark I or the Mark II, duo or solo? Right, yeah. She she was, she was sent me a screenshot of, of a couple different models available online, and obviously a little bit confused as to which one's worth buying. Um, so there's the silver unit. That was the original one that came out three two, three years ago, and that's Mark One. Now there's a dark-colored one. It's black-ish colored. Isn't that this trend, you know, with Apple, it starts silver, then it goes... Uh, so it can match all your kitchen appliances. that black color. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, they have that Mark II. And they also have a Solo and a Duo model. Um, the Solo and Duo denote, denotes how much processing power it has. 
how many cores of processors. This solo is perfectly fine. You're recording one mic, even if you have a couple of plugins on that thing, solo will do it just fine. Right. But Mark One versus Mark Two, I you know what? They they made a bunch of little upgrades under the hood. None of them you'll probably notice as a voice actor. I don't think you're gonna you're gonna care. Right. Mark Two has a, a nifty talkback feature, which if you if you're gonna coach people, and you want to have someone in the booth while you're outside the booth, that is pretty handy. You can yeah. press a button, and it does have a talkback. So yeah. that would be a reason. Yeah, to get we, the Mark we did II. that in Debbie Derryberry Studio, and that yeah. and that and that works really really well. It is cool. The thing about the Apollo Twin, and everyone's like, it's the hot thing to have. Mm-hmm. The fact of the matter is, is you would have an Apollo Twin one because, like you said, it has its all internal processing. The only reason you would really want it is if you like to use plugins, and and have all that extra processing power in there, but you really don't need that if you're just doing dry tracks. So right, right. you know, stick with something basic that's not eight hundred dollars, yeah. and you'll probably be fine. If you have some experience in production, then yeah, you can if try you're it. accustomed to having outboard processing, like if you've used to use this processor or that Symmetrix or whatever. Then it's something to consider investing in. You know, it, it's also something that really matters more for people doing real time live sessions, Source Connect, ISDN, right. that kind of thing, Ipdiddle. Those are the folks that maybe consider this because now they want to be able to put on a high pass filter a or compression, a little bit of this, yeah. a little bit of that, little seasonings, you know, here and there. Then they really can appreciate that. Right. Um, but if you don't know what something does, yeah, Don't use it. The vast majority of you are not going to need those extra bells and whistles for quite some time. Trust right. me. Um, a little sidebar about the Apollo since we're on that. I have noticed that Windows 10 users have had a lot of problems with the Apollo, uh-huh. unfortunately. They released a USB version for Windows users, and they also have the new Apollo Arrow, Thunderbolt 3, which also works on Windows. Apparently, the Windows sound driver is not quite up to snuff, oh. and it doesn't connect well with Chrome. And it doesn't connect well with Zoom, sometimes not well with Skype. It's just not quite up to par uh, well, on the Windows side. So, Well, there's $600 that's not doing it for you. So. Yeah, your mileage may vary. There yeah. are workarounds. You can let us know if you have that trouble. We can I can talk you through some ways to deal with that problem if you need to. Um, but it's not, it's not fully baked yet. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you haven't figured it out yet, if this is the first time you've ever watched our show... One, where have you been? Uh, two, George and I are the guys that know home voiceover studio technology. There's a lot of guys out there who are experts in one studio, their own. Uh, so it's important that you talk to a professional, somebody who really understands and has built hundreds upon hundreds of home voiceover studios. I guess that makes us the most experienced guys on the face of the planet. I think between us, the, the number is well past a thousand. Wow, <laughs> for sure. Personally, it's past a thousand. So whatever you've done, it's it's, it's, it's probably it's double that. double that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> if they would like to work with you and, uh-huh. and with all the marvelous things that you can do for their home studio, how would they contact you? Well, they head over to georgethetech dot com, or if you like short nerdy URLs, you can go to georgethetech. And uh, you can find my website with drop-down menu with all sorts of different ways we can work together, whether it's offline where you send files, I send them back, scheduled support remotely or scheduled support on site if I happen to be in your city. Um, And I do get around a little bit here and there. So that's where you can find me. And Dan does kind of some of the similar stuff. Yeah. And he's over at Uh, homevoiceoverstudio.com. Go on over there. Uh, I'll tell you all about what I do and how I can help you out, if, especially if you're a beginner, you have no idea what you're doing. Uh, I can get you from soup to nuts or some other metaphor uh, fairly quickly and get you up and running in a very short period of time to where you can feel confident that it's not this big boulder on your shoulder that I got to have a home studio. Lock, stock, and barrel. That's the other one I was thinking That's of. a good one. Soup to nuts, lock, lock stock, and barrel. barrel. Yeah. Uh, from A to Z, <laughs> from alpha to omega. We'll go just down the line. Yeah. Uh, anyway, also, if you have a home studio and you want to check out your audio, for 25 bucks, all you have to do is click on my specimen collection cup, which is the bottom of my homepage, and that will take you to a Dropbox. And I will listen to your audio, and I will tell you if you need some help, or if it sounds okay, mm-hmm. if it's just a little tiny thing, I just adjust this a little bit. Right. 
All righty. Well, Samantha Paris is sitting by patiently in the Bay Area up in Petaluma, California. And we're going to talk with her about her book, which still is transparent, Finding the Bunny, right after this. <laughs> this is Cat Cressida as Diddy from Dexter's Laboratory. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. B-O-B-S. B-S. <laughs> anyway, so you got your shiny new Apollo and you want to connect with somebody and talk to them real time and, you know, be a voice actor doing live sessions with other studios. You need the right tool. And that is Source Connect. This one is the one that's been in development and constant updating for over 10 years now. And it is very pervasive in the pro audio world. So you want to get your hands on this. If, you're, if you've been dabbling in that world where people are needing you real time, they want to be able to coach you or direct you real time. Um, you're, doing, you're dabbling, you're dipping a toe and doing affiliate stuff, things that are very time sensitive. You want to check out Source Connect. You can get a trial for a 15-day free trial, that is at source-elements.com and get Source Connect going right now. You don't even have to have one of those little iLock thingies. It'll license itself right to your, your computer, Windows or Mac, either one. So give it a try. Tell them that we sent you. We'd really appreciate it. And without further ado, we'll be right back here with Samantha to talk about her book right after this. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there in the trenches doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Time to introduce our guest. Samantha Paris is a three-time, three-time, it was a big problem at, at WovoCon. I kept saying four, three, <laughs> three-time Clio award-winning voice actor. Uh, she is the founder of Voice Tracks SF in San Francisco, mm -hmm. one of the largest and respected voiceover academies in the United States. Samantha has trained over 10, th I don't have 10,000 fingers. <laughs> Nor the time to count Nor them. Count. Yeah, exactly. She has trained over 10,000 talents from all walks of life since 1988 with the philosophy that talent can be taught. Excellent thought. Above all, Samantha has transformed the lives of people through the process of helping them find their true voices and ultimately find their bunnies. What on earth does that mean? And in that process, she found her own bunny. Now, what does that mean? Samantha is author of the book, Finding the Bunny. As we found out, it looks much better in red than it does in transparent. Um, <laughs> where she peels back the curtain on our fascinating world of voiceover and a whole lot more. So let's welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop, Samantha Paris. Good evening. Hi, guys. Welcome to the show. It's great having you on. I'm excited to be here. This is actually my first Zoom. Oh, <laughs> right. wow. We've moved oh, her no. into the 21st century. This could become a new coaching tool. You never know. Yeah, absolutely. Look at the possibilities. <laughs> well, you're celebrating 30 years of running voice tracks in San Francisco, and you passed a really big milestone, as we were saying, training over 10,000 aspiring working voice actors in the Bay Area. Tell us a little bit about the house, the VO house that Samantha built. What makes Voice Tracks uh, such a unique experience? Well, to fast forward that that uh, answer to that question, <laughs> um, <laughs> thirty years later, I can tell you for sure the thing that makes Voice Tracks so incredible is the camaraderie. Um, it's such a supportive environment. Um, 
I usually have anywhere around 300, 350 active students and everybody there supports each other. Everybody understands that as you lift others up, you lift yourself. And so um, that, that's my, dare I say, like my modern day answer. But if you ask me initially about the house that Samantha built, the interesting thing is, is that I never really intended to be a teacher. I moved to the Bay Area in the late 80s. I had been doing tons of, you know, uh, cartoons and commercials and, you know, all sorts of things. Um, uh, back in the late 70s and 80s, and I absolutely adored what I did, but I just didn't like living in Los Angeles. And of course, back then there was, you know, really there was, you know, just, I mean, it's only been what in the last 10 years, I guess, where you can really live anywhere you want and do voiceover. But back then when I moved up to the Bay Area, I figured I would do voiceover work in San Francisco and I would do voiceover work in LA. It was the during the days of the first fax machine had been invented so my agents at the time SPV they were faxing me my auditions and I was having to direct myself in my own little home studio and I would uh record it on a cassette <laughs> and FedEx the cassette to SPV anyway that was that was what I was doing back there and um so that's what I thought I would do and then all of a sudden one day uh, somebody called up and said, oh, I understand you teach. I was just speaking with uh, your former husband, Tom Pinto, and he said you taught voiceover and I live in the Bay Area and I'd like for you to, you know, take lessons with you. But the thing is, is I didn't teach. And so I was really kind of put on the spot. I didn't want to admit that I didn't teach because I didn't want Tommy to, you know, have egg on his face. So mm. I was like, oh, yeah, I teach. Uh, of course, afterwards, I called Tommy and I said, what the, what the heck did you tell him I taught for? It, that's another long story. But <laughs> <laughs> Ex -husband. One, one student turned into two, two turned into four, four turned into eight. Um, it was never my intention to have a school. And yes, it eventually grew into the biggest academy of its kind in America. We have classes at Voice Tracks morning, noon and night, seven days a week in every single imaginable category you can think of. And um, I have an incredible team of instructors. They are, you know, um, top voice actors and agents, et cetera, from LA, San Francisco, New York. Um, and the real beautiful thing is, you know, having the school now for 30 years, so many of my students became tremendous success stories. And now they have come back to give back and to teach and you know so when people come into voice tracks um you know i would say probably 60 to 70 percent of the people 70 percent i'd say the people that come to voice tracks they've never acted a day in their lives they just either someone's told them that they have a great voice or an interesting voice or it's just you know no pun intended or maybe pun intended there's this little voice inside them saying that this is something that they should explore but they don't know anything about acting they don't know anything about home studios nothing and we will literally take people from the very beginning through a lot of my classes are, are for still you know working professionals who feel like they still need to stay sharp and plus you know the industry is always changing um plus voice acting is an art form and and really if you're an artist you're never done exploring um but anyway, so I take people from beginning to end. I personally mentor every single student of mine. There isn't a student that is ever in a class that I haven't okay, that I haven't suggested. Every six months, I write a handwritten letter to every student telling them how, you know, how they're doing, you know, maybe what they should work on, whether or not I feel like they're ready for a demo. I tell them how much I love them. Um, you know, so it's a whole m mentoring thing that goes on as well which is yeah, nice yeah very yeah yeah the, the bay area it, it has always been a hotbed for, for for voiceover we have a lot of friends up there that are very successful j.s gilbert and uh elizabeth holmes, uh, elizabeth holmes. creative 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 area too. yeah well because the gaming industry is is up yeah. there and uh there's some great people there that we love uh, up in the bay area and now we know you which is really cool uh but what is it that's so you know what is it that's 
what kind of big changes have you seen in the Bay Area uh, in the last few years uh, from from what used to be a really great place? And, you know, but it's changed, hasn't it? It has. It has changed. I mean, again, when I first moved up there in the late 80s, you know, there were such incredible major, major advertising agencies in San Francisco. As a matter of fact, living in L.A., I would see so many of the commercials I would be auditioning for they came from Bay Area uh, ad agencies. Um, so that's what kind of gave me the courage initially to move up there. But yes, things of course have really changed. I'd say, you know, the probably the, the biggest change, you know, with, with San Francisco being the leader in tech, uh, first of all, just home studios and, and, and uh, not going to your agent's office or to a casting director anymore to audition, but doing all of your auditions at home that happened in San Francisco first. Uh, and that's just, you know, that's just because the Bay Area is the Bay Area. So all of that initially started there and there's no, I, I'd say that's the biggest, biggest difference. I mean, you, a voice actor starting out today in the Bay Area will never know what a voiceover casting director is because there is no auditioning done anywhere except from your home studio. Right. And I think that's probably the case in a, across the country, which of course has expanded the entire industry and including a heck of a lot more people. Yeah. yeah but I think in, in LA, I mean, you still have, depending on the agency you're with, you still have the option of coming in. And, you know, I, I, I know uh, my agent's DPN, you know, if there's, if there's a, um, commercial dialogue going on, you know, they still bring the actors in to audition. And of course there are still casting directors. You know, one of my dear colleagues, she comes up and teaches for me all the time, Mary Lynn Wisner, she's still doing casting. Sure is. But none of that exists in the Bay Area. Oh, Thank okay. You. Well, now I understand. Well, you you just wrote this great book that I was, it's, it's kind of autobiographical. We're using the side because it's transparent on this side. Uh, finding the bunny. Um, and it is. It's, it is it's full transparency. <laughs> I, I I sort of got that from reading it. Um, first off, the four was written by your good friend Peter Coyote, uh, who's on every spec. Sound like Peter Coyote? Fascinating to read in the foreword uh, that he doesn't. He reads most of his stuff cold. He did all of Vietnam, going okay. I remember this, and just started off with it. I mean, it's amazing what he can do. It is. He's an extraordinary person. He's an extraordinary talent. I'm proud to say he's an extraordinary teacher. Um, he's, he's now a regular teacher at Voice Tracks, and it's always so fun because, of course, like, who doesn't want to take class with Peter Coyote? Who wouldn't? And I, you know, I, um, it's an, uh, like, well, like all my classes, they're, they're invitational classes. So everybody wants Peter. And then every six months we have to just, you know, the old fashioned way, we have to put everybody that wants his class, we have to put their names in a hat. <laughs> and we have to draw names and yeah, real scientific. Yeah, we got to get him on the show one of these days, like he'll do our show. But anyway, uh, so it's it's a fascinating book. It's it's somewhat autobiographical and it goes from place to place. Uh, but what's the story behind the story? What's the transparency of this book? Well, initially, I didn't want to write the book because I didn't think I could. Um, I just had always, it was bad programming, uh, growing up. So I was always told that I was stupid and, and that I never read. I always had my nose buried in the television and because I didn't read then I was an idiot and you know, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I really believed that it was impossible for me to do it. And I initially hired a ghostwriter to do it. And, um, although he was well-meaning, it was an utter disaster. And so one day I sat down and said, no, 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 I want it to be more like this, you know? And I just started writing. And it was my publicist, Nancy, who, who read what I wrote. And she said, you have to write your book. Um, and so when I initially sat down to do it, it started out that I wanted it to be one big love letter to my students. Um, in my 30 years of teaching, what I have discovered is, and, and I think this is in any form and any type of teaching, since you are the expert in that, 
I found myself for 30 years uh, sitting uh, at the controls and kind of, you know, always feeling like I've been put on a pedestal. And it's a very, for me anyway, a very uncomfortable place to be because we're all the same. And so I really wanted my students to know that I struggled and that I still do struggle just like them. You know, we're all human beings. We're all so perfect in our imperfection. And so mm -hmm. I really wanted all of my students to, to really know the real Samantha. I wanted to just knock out that invisible pedestal. Yeah. So I initially did it for that. And then, um, I guess I, you know, when I teach, it's very unconscious. So I, I didn't really realize how many messages I had to share with people. And um, so the book is really about finding your purpose and also being open to the universe and the universe's messages and discovering that maybe what you think is your purpose isn't and that that's okay. But what's really important is to listen to your inner voice. Listen to that voice that guides you because it's telling you the truth. It's telling you your truth. And for years, I fought it. You know, I always thought I wanted to be an actor. And so for so many years, I had voice tracks and it was taking me away from my voiceover acting. And I had a lot of anger and frustration and, and resentment and, and then, you know, as the, the school it just kept growing and growing and I started to realize what a difference I was making in people's lives. And what ultimately I discovered was that helping people find their voice or find their bunny, find their purpose for me personally is far more rewarding. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. If you're just joining us, uh, we're talking to our guest, uh, Samantha Paris, who is the founder of Voice Tracks up in San Francisco. Uh, and we're talking about her book, Finding the Bunny. Where is it? Where's the bunny? It's hopping by here. Um, yeah, so so it's a metaphor, obviously, for finding what is your true voice. And that's that's really cool. If you've got a question for Samantha, throw it in the chat room or in the Facebook chat, and we will relay that question to her in our next segment. Uh, so what are, what are some of your voice acting philosophies that uh, your book reveals? Well, if we're talking technically about voiceover, I found it really interesting at the beginning of your show. Um, uh, was it Mark Cashman? Is that yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. He was talking about how to be conversational. Right. And um, so I was smiling because, of course, the who am I, where am I, who am I talking to is, is what I've been teaching for 30 years. But for me, it goes even beyond that. It's not just who are you, where are you, who are you talking to, but why are you saying what you're saying? In other words, what do you want? What's your intention? And that all very much has to do with whatever your uh, backstory is. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I do talk about that in the book, but I, uh, I, well, let me go back because you, you, we keep talking about finding the bunny. Really, one of the, the biggest, most important things that I teach um, or what I feel like my gift to uh, teaching voice acting is all about, I am really fantastic in script analysis. And in my mind, script analysis is key. If you don't get the script, you're not going to get the job. And um, so years ago, when I was when I was a young girl, like 15 years 15 years of age or so, and I was in my first voiceover class, uh, I discovered really quickly that there was nothing special about my voice. I had a very average sounding voice. I sound like average teen girl. Now I sound like average mom. In the 40 plus years I've been doing voiceover, nobody has ever commented on my voice and said, oh my gosh, I love your voice. Hmm. I always would get, oh my gosh, your interpretation was better than anyone I ever heard. Or, oh my gosh, you interpreted my script even better, even more than I interpreted it when I was writing it. And what it goes back to is that when I was a little girl growing up, I grew up in a real dysfunctional family. My parents divorced when I was about 10. 
So I can remember being about seven years old, eight years old, and my brother is three years older than me. He was allowed to have the centerfolds of the Playboy magazine. He was allowed to have the centerfolds plastered all over his bedroom walls. And, <laughs> and he had taught me, so I would sit on his bed when he was putting up the centerfolds. And he had taught me that on the cover of Playboy magazine, there was always a little hidden bunny. And so <laughs> sometimes I would see it right away. Sometimes I swear to God, it felt like hours before I could find the bunny. So here it is now. So I'm like then age seven or eight. Now I'm age 15 and I'm in my first voiceover class and I'm looking at these scripts and I'm thinking, okay, because I don't have some unique special voice or something, I am going to have to act better than anyone. And so I used to look in the scripts, like what's that little twist? What's that little something maybe that I can see in the copy that nobody else is going to see. And so therefore my interpretation, I'm going to stand out. So looking at my scripts, I was always searching for the bunny. Ah, in that okay? makes, now we understand. It makes total sense. Yeah, which then also is a metaphor for life. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. And it goes through your life, which is fascinating. Um, the big thing, though, that I teach, which is key, and I really, I love your guys' show. I find all this really so interesting, all this technology. I'm going to use a but here. But at the end of the day, you can have the greatest technology in the world, but if you can't act and if you can't direct yourself, I don't give a darn what your equipment is about. Or, <laughs> yeah. So, We've been only been saying that for about eight years here. And in every Facebook group. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it ain't the mic, kids. It's how you right. use it. And I really feel, unfortunately, like there's a lot of people out there now that because they love technology, they're spending all their time learning that, but they have no clue how to act nor direct themselves. And so that's a lot of what I focus on in my teaching 10 hours a day. Thank God. Uh, that's what we that's what we like to hear because we're always telling people. It's like, look, there's all this marvelous technology out there, but if you're trying to be a geek about it, geeks don't hire voice talent. Casting directors do. Well, you know, we have all these Facebook groups, you know, about the technology of voiceover, about all the specific software, and it's the problem is is that new voice actors stumble into all of them, right? right. And then they see this ongoing conversation about the newest Apollo and the plugins or the newest the, microphone and all this is stuff this one good and they get so distracted and so enamored by that I even got emails from folks who wanted to know what exact equipment was in Don LaFontaine's studio so they could go buy that gear and what sound like Don LaFontaine like what were they what are they this is the this is what goes on you know, I think it's something like only 3% of all the people that are on Voice 123 book jobs. Yep. But I can proudly say that 75% of my students that are on Voice 123 are part of that 3%. And that's because they get really good at voiceover and directing themselves, all that stuff. Then they get their home set up. Then they learn all the technology. And... You know, there you are. Yeah, there's not that much technology to know. It's Horse cart. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> we, we know but, that one. So let me yeah. ask you this. I mean, we, we, George and I hear everybody. I mean, they're sending us their files and we're like, yeah, they're okay. Yeah, okay. We never comment on whether they're a good voice actor or not. Right. We simply want to make sure that their technology is working for them so that they can shine and not worry about their technology. But what do you think separates good voice actors from from great ones like Don LaFontaine and, and some of the great people that we know here in L.A. and San Francisco and, and New York? Dallas and, and everywhere. Chicago and... Well, I got to tell you, it's what I was just saying. I think it's just a sliding scale of how good of an actor you are and how good you are at self-direction. And one of the key points I wanna make about good self-direction is that when you hear, when you record something and you hear it back, don't direct in the negative, direct in the positive. And mm. what I mean by that is you'll hear something back and you'll go, oh Jesus, that's really flat. <laughs> and, so, and so then you'll do it again. 
But the last thing you told yourself was, oh, that's really flat. No, no, no. You want to hear something back and go, what do I need to do to make it better? Oh, I have to give it more energy and I have to, I have, to have a clear idea on who I'm talking to and why I'm saying what I'm saying. Make those choices, vocalize that choice, and then do your next take. Yeah. But 99% of people will say, well, that sucked. I did blah, blah, blah. And well, how's that going to get you to your next take? Exactly. Okay. In other words, play to win, don't play to not lose. Very good. I like that. You, you can quote me on that. Okay. Uh, once again, we're talking with Samantha Paris, and we're talking about her book, Finding the Bunny, and about a uh, voice acting technique that she teaches. By the way, we're giving away a copy of this. Yes, we are. But one that's not transparent. Uh, it's uh, And uh, we're going to have a little contest later on, and you, know, you can call in. No, you can use the chat room, and we'll do that. Also, we're going to be giving away... Um, a class. A class of yours, which is going to be a little essay contest, I bet, I guess, <laughs> which yeah. which we'll, we'll do in the chat room as well. Once again, we're talking with Samantha Paris. If you have a question for her right now, now would be a great time to throw it in the chat room, and uh, we'll get to ask her that question in just a couple of minutes. Um, one of the most important things, that, and you, you were just talking about this, is self-direction. you got to be able to self-direct because you're as... As you're saying, there's no casting lounges in San Francisco, and most of the time, we're just auditioning blindly. Into it's a like, vacuum. Yeah, you know, it's like, you know, conversational and like, you know, the guy you'd like to have a beer with sort of thing. What are the keys, what, what are the, what are the keys to, to mastering self-direction, in your opinion? Um, well, like I said, you want to direct in the positive. Um, I think that it's, you know, so much of the time, it's so hard for us to be objective, Um about our own work. Um, a lot of the classes that I have, we will um, email the students ahead of time that the, the script and you know they have to record it from home and they send it back in. And then, you know, this is the beauty of actually coming to a you know a, a, a real life place. Um, you know, we we play everything back and uh, I'll I'll initially have the actors um, tell me themselves, you know, how, how good of a performance that they did. And, and the other students in the class, we have, we have this rating system. So um, if you do a recording and it's competent, we give it a two. And competent means back in the day, you'd go to an audition, you'd go into your agent's office and you record and they go, oh, you know, that, that's good. And they would think it was good until another actor or five actors later came in and really nailed it. And then they go, oh, Jesus, I told Samantha her take was good. Actually, Susie's take, now that was good. So a two is competent. A three is totally competitive and you should book the job. And we listen back to these things. And normally the performances are somewhere between a 2.0 and a three. And with, with just a little bit of practice in other words i'll have in my head okay that was a 2.3 because she still needed to focus a little bit more on uh on her intention or she kind of threw the product away here i'm gonna give it a 2.3 and then i'll say okay Susie q what do you give yourself and she go she'll go mm, a 2.3 okay what do you need to do to make it better well blah 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 so what i'm getting at here is that when you first start out I can think something is like really good even. And the actor will think it's really terrible. You know, it's just as bad to do something really well and then keep tinkering with it. That can be the kiss of death just as much as thinking something is good when it's bad and sending it in, you know? So really learning to, um, to know yourself and your work and what's good, that is a real practiced thing. So to be able to get it to to where everyone in the class can zero in and come in on that same number is really extraordinary. And it just takes practice. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to have a little contest in just a second. So, Jack Daniel, pay attention because you're going to have to judge this. Uh, but right after we ask this last question, which is, what's the number one message you have for voice actors who are trying to take their career to the next level? As we're always saying, it's like, I gotta take it up. What, what, what can you do? 
you know, it's sort of like what we've been talking about a little bit. Um, if you want to take your career to the next level, you got to check in with yourself. Because in other words, are your chops really that good to go to the next level? Because again, a lot of times people want to look at all these other factors, but they don't really want to check in with themselves and their skill level. You know, I had an acting teacher many years ago. Uh, his name was Cliff Osmond. He was just an extraordinary teacher, an extraordinary man. And he always used to tell his students, he'd look you right in the eye and just say, if you're good, you'll work. Most people don't take the time to really know what good is. Or like I say, it's a sliding scale. They'll say like, well, you know, I, I took five classes, five different classes of voiceover. I'm great. Well, why don't you talk to somebody that, you know, studied day in and day out for five years, 10 years? Most likely that's good. And those are the people working. So if you want to take your career to the next level, you need to really make sure your skill level is up the next level. And if it isn't, you got to dig in and do the work. Yep. It's all about voice acting. Or sometimes some people do voice overacting. <laughs> which is a bit of a problem uh our guest is uh, samantha paris and we're talking about her book finding the bunny and we're talking about her coaching methods and if you've got a question for her right now would be a great time to put them in the chat room and uh, jack daniel will pass that on to us also if you would like to get a copy of this book because not well maybe not this one but uh we'll get all you have to do is in the, the first person in the chat room who can write down where Samantha is talking to us from tonight, you'll get the book and we'll send it to you. Ooh. All right. And we'll be back with your questions and more with Samantha right after these incredibly important messages. The specific city. The specific city, yeah. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, cause I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. All righty, we're back. You know, we were talking with our great sponsor today, Harlan Hogan, who's a great guy. He is. Just man. a wonderful but human being, not to mention a great voice actor in the traditional sense. The kind of guy, if you wanted a friend in voiceover, he'd be the guy you'd want. And we love him for that. But he's got a new set of headphones. Now, we've got the older pair here, the Harlan Hogan uh, voice-optimized headphones from his signature series. George is now modeling them for them. They're really comfortable. They have a very flat response to them, but he's got new ones. He's improved on perfection. Can it possibly be? That's impossible. But he's done it. And one of the things is, is it now has a detachable... Uh, cord on it so nice. if you happen to walk away from your console it'll just pop out and it won't like tear out all the innards of it and stuff mm -hmm. plus it's got great uh memory foam pads in it it's comfortable it has the twisto flex headband on it it's not gonna it's gonna you're gonna be able to wear it for a long period of time so if you're an audiobook reader uh narrator or if you do long -form format e-learning narration Great pair of headphones to have. We'll um, have the new ones here in the studio soon. You'll be able to get to see them up close and personal. I'll bet they look just like this, only better. Yeah. But most importantly, they have a very flat response. They don't color your voice. It's, you, it's like a good pair of studio monitors because what you record is what you're going to hear in your headphones. And there's only one place you can really get them. Well, there's probably a couple places, but the best place to get them is from voiceoveressentials.com. 
voiceoveressentials.com. So go on over to voiceoveressentials.com. That's the name of the place, voiceoveressentials.com. Best place is to go to the bottom of our homepage, down there somewhere, is a picture of Harlan Hogan, and he's talking into his Portabooth Pro. And you click on that, you'll go to voiceoveressentials.com, and you'll see all the great signature series stuff that Harlan has over at voiceoveressentials.com. And you, too, like Mr. Whittem here, could be wearing a pair of those. They're not that expensive, but they are fantastic for voiceover because that's what they were designed for. Most stuff, most stuff that we use, designed for making music. Not these headphones. They're the Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones, and you can only get them at voiceoveressentials.com. So go over there right after the show and buy a pair then. We'll be right back with Samantha Paris and your questions right after these. All righty. Well, who won? It looks like Jim Sprifke won the book. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. He figured out you were in Petaluma. People aren't listening here, San Francisco, San Francisco. I said very specifically, you were in Petaluma. That's right. Home of the World Wrist Wrestling Championship. We and will... we're proud of it. I'll bet. I remember we'll... watching that on Wide World of Sports with Jim McKay. No way. That's yeah. Awesome. We'll get his information and get it off to you. Great. All righty. Well, Mr. Whitham. Yes. Do we have questions from our amazing audience? It looks like we do because right. I've seen them come into the chat room. So let's see what we got here in the audience questions area. And the first one is from Jim Edgar. Uh, what do you find is the most common stumbling block for people new to voiceover? There's a follow-up, but we'll, we'll talk about that one first. So pick a stumbling block for new people. Um, well, uh, traditionally, I think the biggest stumbling block is that people think voiceover is more about your voice. Mm -hmm. and again, when I give my introductory lectures and I, I go around the room and I say, how many of you are here? Because somebody has say you have an interesting voice or a really beautiful voice or you've got a deep voice, whatever. And, and my lectures are usually for about 20 people. And I'm telling you, if not all 20 raise their hand, 19 of them do. So people think it's about their voice. And when they first start studying, they're just so concerned. They're so worried about their voice or they're listening to your, their voice. Do you know when I teach voiceover um, for the first at least year or so, you're not even allowed to wear headphones. That's why mm -hmm. I was finding talking about these new headphones. Um, great. Uh, that's great. But um, uh, because you can't listen to yourself, you have to stop listening to yourself. You have to talk from your heart not from your ears. And people just, they're so concerned with their voices. And it takes a long time for people to realize, it doesn't matter how many times or ways I say it, I'm always saying voiceover is about acting. This is acting. And usually after about the first year, people will say, oh, now I know what you mean. This really is acting. And I'll go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. well, we'll figure it out eventually. And we tell people don't wear headphones when you're recording. They're for monitoring and playback and stuff like that. Or if you're in a directed session and you got to hear what the director is saying. Right. But even then, I mean, I'll I'll usually I'll wear the headphones, but then I'll take them off when when I'm performing. Yeah, See? exactly. Or one ear on, one, one ear, ear off. off. If you have to. Exactly. Um, and he has a follow up for the pros that are out there. Um, what is a, a really common blind spot for the person that's been doing this 10 plus years, the veterans? What is a blind? Okay. Uh, I would say, especially because, well, well, first of all, if you go back maybe 12, 15 years ago, so hard for the seasoned professionals to all of a sudden have to be auditioning from home and directing themselves because mm. we, well, any great actor, right? It just always used to rely on, on a director to bring out the performance. So first of all, for voice actors back then, learning to now perform in front of an audience of none mm. was really difficult. And again, trying to be objective about, you know, was this take good or bad or, or whatever. Um, but I would say now for the modern day, vo the voice actor that started to train and started doing voice over 10 years ago and, and onward, I think one really tricky thing is that 
because you don't get feedback, as you guys said, you do millions of auditions and you just, you don't hear anything. You don't necessarily realize that you're developing bad habits. And uh, I don't care how great of a voice actor you are. The basics are always so important. Remembering to go back to your basics. I don't care how great you are. You cannot just pick up a script and just peel it off without thinking about, again, who am I? Where am I? Who am I talking to? What's my intention? There's no shortcuts. And I think what happens over time, you're in your studio, you know, you're getting, you know, at least my working students, you know, they're getting anywhere from 10 to 20 different auditions a day. And, you know, they've got to peel them out in an hour or two, whatever. And so they, they feel like they can kind of gloss over all those steps and and because you're not getting any feedback, like I said, you don't realize that you are developing bad habits. Wow, I, I have so many clients, of course, who are seasoned actors, and you know, and and I think you, they sometimes they strike a vein, right? You know, and they they can be very busy for a year, two, five years, even, and that vein will go dry eventually. And boy, is it time to get back to some training and some back relearning some things. I mean, it's really I do true. a lot of that. In, in private lessons where I'll, I'll work with people that, you know, haven't studied with me for quite a while, or, you know, it, it can be 10 years or something. And I say, okay, bring in some of your auditions. Let's listen. And you know, what's really interesting is that I usually find it's sort of the good news. I find a pattern. So if I listen to, to 10 auditions, they do, I'm, I'm never saying that, you know, X is wrong with one take, but Y is wrong with the other and Z is, usually I can hear there's a thread. There's like one or two things that the performer is not doing in all of them. Yeah. So they walk in a private lesson going, oh God, yes, I just need a post-it note that says, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, so. It's never worked for me. They tend to fall off after a while. <laughs> 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 what was that about? I mean, it was something. Well, Jack Daniels got an interesting question here. Uh huh. Shall I read that one too? You shall. Oh man, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, Samantha, regarding narration from Jack, he says, "I've worked with your NorCal colleague Tom Pinto, who of course teaches with you. He talks about how handling a cold open can quickly separate the men from the boys, at least when the spec is male." Is there something that you can point to in listening to narration and parsing copy that you think quickly separates someone in terms of their professionalism, I guess? Um, if I, well, if I'm understanding the, the question, I, I think my brain, uh, and maybe I'm not, but Let my me... brain immediately was going to Peter Coyote. Yeah. And the fact that all of the really great narrators, and Peter certainly is at the top of the list, Again, it's it's it is acting. If I I would prefer to call narrating storytelling, and I'm not just talking about I'm not talking about audiobooks, but I mean, you're always you're narrating a story. It's storytelling. So um, again, I I think people forget that they just they see all of this really long narration and they just sit down and kind of go at it. Um, so if I'm understanding the question, the question, that's that's my thoughts on it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just reinterpreting it, but like I, th I think he's saying when you when you, the first that 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 voice actor who can sit down and read something cold, what do you hear? Is this this is how you're interpreting? Yeah. What do you hear? And you go, oh wow, this is a real pro. I'm hearing yeah, right now. You know what? I don't. You know, you, you, again, like we were talking before the show about you know how Peter. Um, uh, just sits down and does it cold and he does. And that's extraordinary. I've never been like that. And yeah. it certainly didn't stop me from completely earning a living as a voice actor all of these years. I'm not a good cold reader. I don't think that that, especially nowadays, you're not, you know, back in the day, you'd go to an audition, right? You only had, you could only do one or two takes because there was a million people that had to get in and out, but now you are in your home studio. So excuse me, but what what's the rush who, who are you competing against to you know to be brilliant on that first cold read mm -hmm. it's not, it's not imperative that you do a brilliant cold read what's imperative is that when you push send that what you just whatever is is there that's recorded is brilliant 
And whether you did it cold or whether you did it five takes, it took you five takes, who cares? Yeah, he did send a little clarification <laughs> point. And he says, really, he means in terms of sizing up the copy and making those decisions, not really so much about the cold read, but when that's what he really, he set me off the scent with a cold read thing. But it's really about, for him, he's talking about sizing up the copy and making decisions. What is it something that you separates that, that someone that's got a little years in and someone that's kind of fresh? Yeah. Um, well, I think, again, it goes back to script analysis. Yeah. And it's the more it, it, the more scripts you look at, the better you get at, at seeing what it's really saying and seeing all the different layers. You know, it's like I, I love to play tennis, but and, and when I took it up, you know, like 10 years ago, I was absolutely horrible and uh, my serve was terrible. And, you know, it's just a matter of you've got to throw thousands of tennis balls up in the air uh, to get that toss right so that you'll have a good serve. Well, you've got to just look at thousands and thousands of scripts. And you might think you're seeing a lot in the copy, you know, year one into your voiceover career, but just wait, year four, year five, you're going to see a hundred times more in the copy. So when I read something and just kind of suss it up, of course, I see way more in it than the average voice actor, but that's just because I've been doing it. So it just takes, it just takes practice. Mm -hmm. Jack says, thanks. That's Absolutely. exactly what he wanted yeah. to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Gary Lewis asks, this is an interesting question. Um, they're all interesting questions, but, um, you know, we do most of the stuff on our own and we sort of create our own styles of doing things. Uh, but Gary asks, how much technique on average is self-taught? Wait, how do you answer that? Yeah, how much technique is self-taught? Well, I think, oh gosh, how, you know, I have this expression, talent can be taught. So, and, and what I mean by that is I do think voiceover is a craft again, because the vast majority of people that come to my school, they've never had an acting lesson in their life and never, they've never had an acting lesson in their life. And so it's like anything else. How can you expect to be good at something or great at something if you've never, ever done it? When I start working with beginners, I assume they're going to suck and anything above that is shocking. And of course, I'm not judging. I'm thinking like, okay, they're not going to be very good, which is why they're coming to me. And my goal is to make them great. So if somebody, going back to being self-taught, well, I do think that there are some people, including myself, because I actually didn't have very much training, who I do think you have natural ability so just an innate ability or an innate ear for this. And so that can be a gift. Um, and so maybe there are some people that have a gift. And so they feel like, so when they are first starting out and they're teaching themselves, they're self-taught, well, that could very well be because they just, they have an innate gift for this. But um, if you don't, I can tell you it will be impossible for you to teach yourself how to do this. You do need guidance. And whether that mm. is going online or physically going to a school, it's going to, you're kidding yourself if you think you can teach yourself how to do this. All right. Right. Which leads to the last question we have today. Which From Borkles. Borkles. That's the name. That's the name. Okay. Yes. And and hopefully we've helped you along here with this question. Does Voice Tracks offer virtual classes? Actually, we're just starting. Uh, I fought it for a long, long time. You guys probably figured that out because I said, ooh, this is my first Zoom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I had to wrap my head around being able to give uh, super, super high quality, high mentoring instruction like we do live and i've been just struggling with how can i do that um in a webinar kind of way oh we can teach you that <laughs> <laughs> and so i mean because there's just something again at, at voice tracks about the, the camaraderie and the minute you walk in the door you just feel just such a a sense of 
support and nurture it's just such a supportive nurturing environment i thought gosh you know can we really create that with our webinars and so we've been just giving a lot of thought to all of it on how we can structure them and so we are actually doing our first webinar in january and i'm also starting to teach um, private lessons um this way and and we're just we're going to be diligent in trying to bring the voice tracks experience to online teaching fabulous which brings us to giving away a lesson yes uh and if you would like to win a lesson with samantha paris uh if you can make a comment in our chat room about uh, what you found most helpful or interesting about our conversation with samantha tonight and put it in the chat room and samantha and her staff will go over these and they will find the best ones and they will draw a name out of a hat make sure you put your name with the uh, with the uh, with the comment it's a little essay question and uh, the winner will get a, a lesson with uh, Samantha, which sounds like a very exciting sort of thing. But we want them to uh, like our Facebook page and post it there. Ah, absolutely. Do we have the Facebook page there? Yes, we do. Well, it's it's uh, we're we're currently uh, tagged it on our Facebook of the show tonight. Right. And if you're looking for it, it's Voice Tracks, one word, S F. That's the Facebook page you're looking for. Right. That's the like appropriate it. place to go and like. Make sure you like it. Samantha, it has been a major pleasure uh, talking with you tonight. And, and I can't, you know, I, 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 I skimmed through this and I'm going to read the rest of it because now I find it fascinating. And uh, uh, even more now, yeah. Even more so now. And uh, so everybody else should go out and buy that book right now Finding the Bunny. Samantha, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you, guys. It was a lot of fun. All righty. We'll, we'll see you soon next time we're in the Bay Area. Okay. All righty. Okay. okay. What Start writing, kids. Yeah. That's right. All righty. Well, we'll be right back, and we'll wrap things up into a nice tight little ball for the kittens right after this. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services, while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All right, we are back. Indeed. We have returned for a short bit here. Uh, again, write your comments in the chat room there. You could get a free lesson with her. That would be great. She's a marvelous acting coach, a voice acting coach. And uh, and now she'll learn how to do it virtually. You know what? It's, it's, I, I really um, I appreciate her desire to maintain that way of teaching for so long. I mean... I, I, for me, it was well. It was also a learning a big lesson in learning how to transition what I do in person to on the internet. You know, I just how I was kind of an early adopter of all that. But yeah, it's a learning process, and she wanted to make sure that when she was ready to do it, it was fully baked. Right. That's and why I the conferences that. are so good because you're around your colleagues, and uh, and again, it's a very supportive community. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Next week on this show, we have. Roy Samuelson. Mm -hmm. Look yeah. him up. Look him up. The guy's done a lot of stuff that, Busy. like, oh, that was him. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. that guy. It's, it's the faceless, you know, voiceover world. I love getting people on who, and I, and I go, who is that? Because, you know, it means we're bringing in names that are working in this business, have a lot to say. <laughs> they're actually working. But they're saving it all up to be on our show. That's right. They're not on, they're not all over the internet spewing it everywhere. They're going to, He's going to talk about it here on the show next week. Great. Uh, then on uh, December 3rd, uh, Jonathan Tilly, we have a, oh, yeah. an interview with him mm -hmm. uh, talking about 
you know, his Instagram challenge and all oh, the yeah. other things that uh, all these people are like, I'm doing the Instagram challenge. I know. I see that all over Instagram. Even my wife is doing it. It's Fantastic. amazing. Yes. Uh, who are our donors of the week? Well, we got one that just came in from Elizabeth Holmes. That well, was very kind. We of love you, Elizabeth. So nice of her to support. Um, Tracy H. Reynolds, who's a regular donor, as well as Andrew Kaufman and Tremaine Mosley. Hey, Trey. And coming down, we've got Eric Aragoni. Eric. Still hitting Come us. on down, visit us, Eric. Come yeah, on. We miss you, man. Uh, Philip Sapir. And looping back to the week before, we're all the way back to. This is a sponsorship, and Sarah Borges. So thank you so much, all of you. It's a nice little extra that we get every week, sometimes once a month, and just sometimes just whenever you feel like it. If you have a, we have a guest on that you really enjoyed, you know, it's like like Elizabeth Holmes did tonight. She gave us this donation. It was really appreciated. So you can do that right on vobs.tv at it, the bottom of the screen. It helps a lot, and the fact that our show has technically improved and become incredibly reliable is because of you guys, and it's we really, really appreciate that. Yeah. One of the things that's interesting is how the growth of our mailing list. Hmm. It's like over 500 people now. We want to grow that to 1,000. So how do they get on the mailing list? They can get on the mailing list by going right to vobs.tv mm-hmm. and filling out the little form that's on the website. You've probably subscribed to a mailing list before. You'll see the little box where you type in your name and your email address. and We, we won't spam you. It's not a spammy thing. It's just uh, here's what's happening next time right. on the show. Right. Plus, Another way to stay in touch. Yeah. Plus, we got to do a new survey. We do. We're going to do a new, we're going to retool and do a fresh, short, more focused survey. It's more about basically how you, how you consume the show and what is the most important things about our show to you, I think. It's right. really what we're concerned about. Right. We're going to. Make a few little changes here. Yeah. Nothing drastic. It's going to be better for you. Yeah. So let us know what you want to hear about. Uh, show us your booths. This is Malcolm McDowell's booth? It is. He doesn't know I've sent this in. Uh-oh. I hope. We won't give this the is, address. This is in an undisclosed location somewhere <laughs> in California. That narrows it down, down for you. Yeah, give or take. But anyway, this is a this is a space in, in his barn outside of his house. <laughs> and uh, it, it was really fun and different to work with a a client like that, yeah. especially going into his home, sitting down, finding finding out what he needs, and then asking if I would like a cup of tea. Yes. And when Malcolm McDowell offers you a cup of tea, you say yes. That Absolutely. Was, that was really cool. Would you like some tea? Yeah. Oh, God, he was so good in Clockwork he Orange. He is busier and every, than ever, though. He has. Right, got, on camera. Got a good agent, getting him the yeah, good he stuff. Is, he's killing it. All righty. Uh, let's see here. Once again, if you need help with your home studio, which is why you watch us every week, but you want some personal attention, if you'd like to work with George, they go to? You can go to georgethetech.com, and right over to Dan's world, you'll find him at? Homevoiceoverstudio.com. Looking forward to hearing from you guys. There's the place right there. Uh, Hey, I got to be on your geeky podcast this week. That's right. He's going to be on... Well, actually, two episodes. One about WovoCon. Right. Where we just did a really brief, here's what we did at WovoCon. And there's another episode coming up in the next two weeks where we delve into an interview with a fellow who is a major brain in the world of recording and studio and engineering. You want to check that out as well. Oh, he just to- he made me feel so good about myself. And all the things that we talk about, he's like, yeah, that's what we do. It's like, like... The expert said, yeah, you guys are right on. Yeah, Bobby is a brilliant man, so tune into that. Fascinating. Uh, hey, if you'd like to be in our audience, like this full house we have tonight, all you have to do is write to us at theguys at vobs.tv and say, hey, I want to be in the audience. And we will let us know when you're going to be in the greater Los Angeles area or if you live in the greater Los Angeles area. This is a convenient location, uh, folks. You, it's, Anywhere it's, in the valley, you can get here in about 15, 20 minutes. Right at the crossroads of the 101 and the 405. I've become so California in my <laughs> describing these things. Um, we're here Monday nights at 6 p.m., and uh, we'd love to have you here. The podcast version, a lot of you may be listening, but if you prefer to listen to the show, you can listen to it as a podcast. It is a long show. So you might enjoy it that way while you're driving around L.A. sitting in traffic. Sitting in traffic. Uh, You might like it that way. And uh, for those who are listening, do tune in once in a while and see what we look like and see who our guests look like. 
and be involved in the chat room. It's Absolutely. another way to consume the show. Absolutely. Every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific at VOBS.TV. Very good. We need to thank our sponsors once again, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Uh, source Elements. VO to go go. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. Alrighty. We also need to thank the uh, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting. Live. 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 That's live. Uh, our producer, Catherine Curridan, who got us Samantha Paris. She was great. Just wonderful. Nailed it. Yeah. Uh, Jack Daniel on chat room duty, even though he's... Remote chat room duty. Remote chat room duty. It's all good. You know, doing his trailer thing. And, uh, of of course, our amazing technical director who's got it down as tight as it can Don't be. Don't do that so hard. Or something's going to rattle loose and we're going to lose everything. Just Actually, the fact that you can hit the desk that hard <laughs> and we're still on the air, yes. that's thanks to Sue Merlino. Sue Merlino, <laughs> our great technical director. Uh, well... That's going to do it for us this week. Oh, and of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Don't oh, wanna, Lee. We never want to forget Lee. Where are you? Lee. He's into RC now. I know. I'll have to go Big hang time. out with him. All right. Anyway, that's going to do it for us this week. Again, not an easy business, but we're here to help you out. Because if it sounds right, it is good or right. If it sounds good, it's right. Is there you go. Yeah, we'll think of something. <laughs> anyway, I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Widow. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VOBS. <laughs> we'll see you next week, kids. Bye. <laughs>